Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson, and today we're here to take a look at a 2014 Ram 2500 truck with a 6.4 liter engine in it. This Ram's engine is producing low power intermittently, apparently. I guess it runs really bad. So let's get a scan tool on it, and let's get it started up and see what's going on with this Ram. I have the scan tool connected to the vehicle and I've got the engine running and originally I was going to go drive the car because it has a low power problem but this car is missing really badly right now it's not running well um, the scan tool is showing me that I'm rich on both banks I don't have a fuel control problem present and I have a bank to bank trim problem of 14 percent and that's a lot between the two banks um, it's still cool. We just started it, so that's okay. The engine vacuum is low, probably because it's running so poorly. I have 11 codes, quite a few, and I have all, none of the monitors have run. The shop has been trying to fix the car. So let's see what we've got for DTCs. So basically, we have a random misfire detected. I wouldn't doubt that. And then we have an ignition coil secondary malfunction on A, B, C, and F. So we got a bunch of ignition coils that it's saying isn't working. Um, so since it's missing and I got ignition coil faults, really what I want to do right now is I want to just go get a scope on this so we can figure out what's wrong, what's going on with this engine. So let's go ahead and get the scope connected. Let me show you how we've connected the scope to this RAM. So I've connected channel 1 to cylinder 1, channel 2 to cylinder 2, and so forth. Now each channel represents the cylinder of this 8-cylinder engine. Now is what we need to do is to start this vehicle up and gather the data so we can try to figure out what's going on with this engine. The first thing I want to do is make sure that my back probes into each one of the coil connections is good. We're going to do that by going to meter. If any of the coil connections weren't good, this light right here would be red. They're all out, showing that I have a good connection into all of them. So that's a good thing. So now is what we need to do is just come over and get some data. So we're going to get the data. We're going to start it up. We're going to stop it, and I can already see that we have some holes in this grid. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to get the zoom window, we're going to come in here, and we can see that I don't have the yellow, red, and green. So there's no yellow, that would be cylinder 1, cylinder 2, and cylinder 3 are not firing. So what I want to do is we want to come in and we'll get this, and we're going to get the cursors. and now we're going to mark this. Now I'm on cylinder 7 so we're going to pick 7 and the firing order is 18436572 so we're good there, we're on ignition and now we can see that the ones that we're missing here cylinder 2 is missing um, so cylinder 2 and cylinder 1, both of these are missing here, 1 and 2 and then we're missing 3 right here. So the coil apparently isn't firing um, because I have a voltage state on the wire. We can see that down here. Let's get zoom window. So I have the yellow trace is lit. It's showing the red trace is there and the green trace. So I have power at that source. I'm just not commanding it on. So this is some type of a driver problem in the computer where either the cam and crank is confused or the drivers are bad or I'm missing a power and ground. But this is more some type of a computer issue where it's just not commanding these on. We can see how it's just not commanding some of these on. So it's what I want to do first is I want to go get a back probe at the computer and I want to find these drivers at the computer that aren't firing and I want to make sure that the voltage has made it to the computer that I don't have some kind of wiring problem to the computer. So let's go ahead and find these wires at the computer and uh, get them back probed and then we can make sure that we have 
a source there and then we're going to activate them with the scope to make sure that I can fire these and that there's nothing wrong with those coils. There's no reason that it would have blown a driver out. Uh, so let's go ahead and take care of that. I've gone ahead and I've gotten into the computer and I've gotten channel 1, 2, and 3 and coils 1, 2, and 3. Now I'm going to put the pull down out into each one of these and I'm going to read it with this amp clamp. So when I plug it in, I'll not only read that I can turn it on and activate it, but we want to make sure that we're not pulling too much amps and we could have maybe blown one of these drivers or all of the drivers. So that's one of the things I want to do. Now this is a, a Dodge, so it's got an ASD relay, an automatic shutdown. That means if this engine isn't cranking, I do not have power on the coils. So I've added the power from the battery power to the coil positive. So now let's go ahead and get the scope set up so we can complete this test. The e-scope is far more than just a scope. It will actually output power and sync power. The pull down out will pull a circuit to ground and I can control that like I'm a computer. So in this case, we're gonna use the pull down out to activate these coils. We wanna go ahead and get the scope set up for the test. We're going to go to 4 and we're going to put it on 20 amps because we have an amp clamp. We're going to zero it. Now that makes it really easy to use the amp clamp. So now the amp clamp is ready. So now is what we want to do is to go to outputs and we want to start this. Now what this does is it starts a driver that's inside the scope. This is a transistor that's going to turn on and off this circuit and it will substitute like the driver here but it's going through the scope. So I've got an amp clamp on my lead that goes to the scope because the current's going through the scope to a ground path. So we can watch the current as well. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and start this. Let's go ahead and we'll, we're going to just get our selected channels that we want here. And now we're going to do one. So now we're in one and we're going to go ahead and come in. We want to zoom in. Now we can see that this coil is firing. Do you see the coil fire? The blue trace is the current, and roughly we're at about uh, six, seven amps. So the amperage is not so high that it would blow or shut down that driver. Everything is working and we're right at the computer. So now we want to go ahead and we want to do cylinder two. So now we're doing two, and we want to go in here and we want to open this up. And again, we can see that we're firing that coil. It is firing, and look at the current in blue. And again, we're six, seven amps, so that's okay. It's not so much, and it's enough to fire. So that's good. So now is what we want to do, is we want to go ahead and we want to get in cylinder three. And now again, we can see we fired it. And again, my current is about six, seven amps. It's not so high that it's gonna blow it. Everything is okay. So basically, it's what this test provided me is I know that I can fire those coils and the circuit is good between the coil and the computer and the current is not too high, it's okay. So this means that the computer has just chosen to not fire the coils or those coil drivers are bad in this computer. The way I want to determine that is I want to get into an injector. So we'll just do cylinder one. I want to get into the injector and I want to start the car. When I start the car, I want to see if that injector is present and then it goes away once it sees it doesn't fire that cylinder. That will tell you that the computer strategy is trying to fire the cylinder and once it sees it cannot fire the cylinder because it's commanding the driver but the driver is bad, then it's going to go ahead and shut the injector down. But that tells me another piece of, of data that I really need before, I, before we condemn this computer and we also still need to check the powers and grounds at the computer. So let's go ahead and get in injector one and see what the injector does. So we've gone ahead and connected channel five to the injector on cylinder one. So now let's go ahead and collect that data. Now that's what we want to do is we want to go ahead and turn these channels back on. And I want more time here. So now we have enough time, so we're going to go ahead and record this, and we're going to start the car up. And 
and we can already see the problem. Do you see how the injector fired and it shut off? The injector is on one. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. So we have the injector firing right here. And that's the injector and you can see it fired and then it shut off. So the computer wants to get the engine running. It's trying to start and make it run. But we have another problem here. So you can see here where the injector was on and then it shuts off. But we're not firing the coil ever to fire that fuel stock. So what's going to happen is it's going to shut off. So this tells me that the computer is trying to start and run all of these cylinders and then it deactivates the injector because there is no spark occurring. This is a problem with the PCM or the drivers basically in the PCM. So let's go ahead and check the powers and grounds at the computer. Okay, so we've connected into all the powers and grounds in the main connector. So now is what we want to do is to get the scope running and then we want to crank the engine over and start it and look at the crank and the running cycles to make sure we have no voltage drops on these power and ground sources. Now we've gotten into the powers and grounds at the PCM, we need to make sure that we have a good connection where I've back probed in. I'm going to do that right here and we're going to do that in the meter. So in the meter, do you see how all these lights are out? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Do you see how the yellow light came on red? Do you see it's red? Well, if it's red, it's telling me I'm not connected. So then I'd need to go re-back probe. And a lot of times, back probe in these computers, it's tough to get into the connections and get a good one. In this case, they're all in and we're good. So I want to come over to measure and deep record. We want to start this. Now is what we're going to do is start this engine up and let it run. You always have to at least crank the car if it won't start or crank and run the car if it will run. You do not have a voltage drop if you don't have current flowing through the circuit. So it has to have a current flow to establish to do this. So now what we want to do is shut this off. And what we'll do is we can take the zoom right here and we can see this voltage drop. This is the inrush to the starter. And then we come up and we can see that we have two planes of voltage there. I want this drop to be above 8 volts, really about 9 volts. This gives me the state of the battery or how low it goes. If this drops way down to like 5 volts, that can give me computer problems. In this case, that's good. The next thing I want to do is we want to come over here and I want to get the cursors. And we want to put the cursors through and I got 400 millivolts. Well, I'm allowed 500 millivolt drop difference on the power side, so basically that shows me I'm good. And then we're going to go in and we're going to look at the grounds. We're not having a voltage drop. Voltage rises when it has the problem. So on a ground plane, the voltage is going to go up. On a power plane, the voltage is going to go down. Same problem, it shows resistance. In this case, the powers and grounds on this system are good. So what's going to need to happen is the shop is going to need to put this computer in and get it programmed and then this vehicle will be ready to return to the customer. What I want you to take away from this is the way I went about diagnosing this vehicle. This is an event driven diagnostic plan. Guys, there is no silver bullets. They just, that just doesn't work. If you want to fix cars, you need to provide yourself a test. You need to understand what the test is going to do and then you run the test and the results from that test, understanding those, will then drive the next test that I'm going to run. If you do event driven diagnostics, and you have quality equipment and an oscilloscope, you really need to use oscilloscopes, you too will be successful troubleshooting in your base.